Well, 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 what a month. Hell, what a year for our imposter in chief, or the drooling tyrant we've been forced to refer to as our president. And yes, I know I've got some explaining to do as to my whereabouts. We'll get into where I've been after the main video. You see, we've got a lot to catch up on, but let's start today with America's favorite son, Hunter Biden, and his laptop from heaven. You know, I just don't understand why people constantly refer to it as the laptop from hell. This thing has been a genuine godsend. I mean, think about it. Let's set aside the 10% for the big guy for a moment and all the evidence entangling the White House right now, finally. And just appreciate all the assumptions of rich, entitled, elitist political offspring that have been satisfied. Well, let's just say verified. We talked years ago at length about crack pipes and dead brother military issued IDs left in rental cars in Arizona somewhere mysteriously. Little Hunter left a trail of crumbs everywhere he went. A little white trail of crumbs. As it turns out, our lovely Secret Service had their hands full cleaning up and covering up for Joe's little creation. And that's exactly what Hunter is, a product of Joseph R. Biden. We also went into great detail involving Little Hunter and the Arkansas Stripper Baby. Remember that? Hunter being dumb enough to think he could elude a DNA test in Red Arkansas. It was comical at the time, knowing damn well the little baby and mother were going to be well compensated for the rest of their life. As long as they keep quiet, I'm sure. So I wouldn't be looking forward to seeing any of the Arkansas Biden bloodlines present in the family Christmas photos, because the big guy and the good Dr. Jill haven't even gotten around to acknowledging their existence yet. Now let's touch on the amazing amounts of sexual depravity oh so well documented on this laptop. This young man paid tens of thousands of dollars a month on companionship and much, much more on massive amounts of illegal drugs, mostly courtesy of China and Ukraine. Yes, that Ukraine. You know, it's kind of ironic you're seeing what paying off the big guy got Ukraine right now, aren't you? There's a whole lot more to that story and we're going to go into that in the weeks moving forward. Anyways, moving on. It's a credit to the human body's ability that this man is even alive today, let alone walking and talking. And this is one part of the story never mentioned, even in conservative media. I guess there's a lot to digest here, especially as the mainstream all of a sudden decided to acknowledge this whole situation with Hunter. If you follow the money, which isn't hard to do, because despite Daddy calling Hunter the smartest person he knows, Hunter wasn't very good at covering up his tracks at all. And he knew, all the while, he was breaking all kinds of laws. He spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in just a four to five year span on cocaine alone. It's truly amazing he's alive. Well, at least one thing's for sure, young Hunter isn't a racist. The other day I saw pictures on Twitter, purportedly of a young woman of color, almost certainly recognizable as one of Barack Hussein Obama's lovely young daughters. All up in a hotel room full of cocaine and naked with Hunter. In case you didn't know, the president's pride and joy just loves being naked and documenting it. You know, folks, it's almost as if Hunter always really wanted his lifestyle exposed. I mean, why else would you post your personal sexual encounters on Pornhub, the biggest porn site on the planet? Well, who really knows what Hunter's true intentions were or are? But one thing is for sure. The media's intentions are to push this story out quickly, acknowledge the issue, and then press on before the midterms, hoping the low IQ masses forget about everything to do with Hunter. But why? Do we have indictments coming, maybe? Or could there be a couple of disgruntled Secret Service agents about to hit the talk show circuit and write a book? Or is there more that we don't yet see coming out of Ukraine ties? Does John Durham maybe have more goodies coming our way and the Democrats are doing a little closet cleaning in hopes of not piling up too many scandals all at once. We'll find out much more in the coming weeks and months as the dissecting continues of the laptop from heaven. Oh, and uh, post-mortem reports following the November election are going to be promising and extensive. But even prior to the midterm elections taking place, which promised to be a bloodbath for Republicans taking back power, 
you can already see the glaring mistakes being made. On another note, uh, kind of, Democrats have a messaging problem, go figure, with some of that being by choice and the rest due to their failing policies, of course. Things like inflation, gas prices, foreign policy disasters, and of course the border crisis can't be messaged away with lofty language. On that front, there's little Democrats can do to change the political dynamics. Joe Biden and his party have to own their boondoggles, whether they want to or not. But then there's that messaging that happens by choice. Let's take, for example, this recent masterpiece by the Washington Post. The Post tweeted out, Conspiracy theories and grievance permeated the crowd assembled for Donald Trump's first rally in Michigan since his 2020 election loss. As an adoring throng of 5,000 cheered his family's claims that the election was rigged and stolen. You see how they try to push the little 5,000 number in there? You see, I know that they know that at about 7 a.m. that morning, there were 5,000 people there waiting to get in. There were roughly 30 to 45,000 there by the time Trump took the stage. Anyways, in recent results of two focus groups, both of which were made up of not just Biden voters, but Biden's base voters, what was found was widespread discontent with the Democrat Party, with an emphasis on the issues most Americans are worried about, i.e. inflation. COVID-19 restrictions and crime. In other words, these still self-confessing Biden voters, or as I would describe them, idiots, they weren't losing sleep over January 6th or Donald Trump having political rallies where people believed the 2020 election was stolen. Yet Democrats have made the asinine decision to continue to lean into issues that people don't give a damn about, while they and the press obsess over marginal rhetoric, that is, in no way groundbreaking or dangerous at this point. Normal Democrats are obsessing over their bank accounts. That represents a huge message gap for Democrats with the electorate. They simply aren't speaking the language most Americans are speaking right now. That matters, because the more people feel ignored, the more restless they become. So, for the midterms, that could mean severely depressing turnout for Democrats an election they were already going to get clobbered in before making such mistakes. Oh, but it gets so much worse though. The left has also decided to lean in to losing issues like promoting the sexualization of children. Now I'm sure it feels oh so good to shout and scream on Twitter about Governor Ron DeSantis, but polling shows that a majority of people support the parental rights in education bill. Now, if you throw in the current energy problems where Democrats absolutely refuse to do what it takes to increase domestic production and lower prices, then you end up with a platform going into November that alienates and angers most Americans. Now a very deep midterm cliff is approaching, and Democrats are content with hitting the gas. As a Republican, I'm certainly supportive of that. But as a political onlooker, I can't help but notice how insane that strategy truly is. I can only chalk this up to hubris, and we all know what comes after pride. Alright, now a quick explanation as to my extended leave of absence. And I would like to thank everyone for their concerned emails and messages on Twitter. I received two strikes for misinformation within 48 hours on YouTube a couple of months back. These were, I'm sure, for stating obvious facts concerning the previous presidential election. But, much like the laptop from heaven, reality will rear its head eventually on that front. Now, speaking of reality, until Google loses its stranglehold on the entire internet, the only way I will be able to grow and make any kind of living creating content will be, unfortunately, through YouTube and not wanting to be unfair and provide content for some folks and not for others i decided i'll just shut the whole damn thing down for a couple months and if i'm being honest i had other things to focus on in my life as well now moving forward i'll be posting two or three videos a week until i get things warmed up again and we'll just see how things go from there in the meantime let's give credit where credit is due some of this came by way of redstate.com if you liked it hit that like button subscribe if you haven't leave a comment down below. There's a PayPal link in the description box, so please put a dollar in the bucket on the way out the door. I'd like to thank everyone for all your donations. They're much needed and much appreciated. 
Now, with all that being said, we'll see you next time. How is that not a conflict of interest? It's not a conflict of interest. There's been no indication of any conflict of interest from Ukraine or anywhere else, period. I'm not going to I'm not going to respond to that. Let's focus on the problem. Focus on this man, what he's doing that no president has ever done. No president. Come on, move. Move. Easy, easy.